Mate, Haz. Haz the Hilux. Haz is a 2000 Hilux SR5. I think the range, I don't know if it's called the range, the model is the KZN165R uh, with the three liter turbo diesel. First of the kind of turbo diesels, as far as I can tell. First of the Hilux turbo diesels, sorry. She's now got 145,000 K on the clock. Bought her with 102. Two years ago is when I bought her, so I've added a third of the kilometers on it already. I'll give you a bit of a tour around it. We're gonna kind of break it up into chunks. But yeah, let's get into it. So we'll go engine, exterior, cockpit, canopy, electrical. I think that's kind of all there is to it. It's not a, I mean, it's, it's humble, it's humble. Um, so the engine's the, the KZTE, the turbo diesel. Absolutely stock as a rock. I'm not even gonna bother showing you under the hood. Uh, the only thing I've added is a oil catch can. Put that in myself, just one of the ProVent units Really easy to do. Unfortunately, the, the KZ, KZNs don't have a like a pre-made kit. Um, so I had to get the universal one and do a little bit of messing around. But anyway, it, it went in all right. Then we've got the it's TJM bull bar on the front. Came with the car along with the two spotties. Um, underneath, a couple of, there's one recovery point. And then you got your bash plates and whatnot. What else have we got on the exterior? These side steps are Toyota. There you go. I didn't even know. The tray is just a steel tray. Really kind of hard wearing. It's great. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it. Suspension and tires. So suspension, I got upgraded. Tough Dog adjustable suspension with 300 kilogram constant load, which is a bit light on when I've got the, the whole canopy on, but I had to compromise because I often don't have the canopy on, I can take it off. And then if I had, if I had the 500 kilogram constant load, it would just be an, a rubbish ride. So compromise, got the 300 kilo. The cool thing about the, the Tough Dog suspension, I think it's coming into quite a lot of them now, is that it's adjustable. So I can adjust the hardness with this little knob there. Just that one. Um, really easy, you literally just spin it. So when I have the canopy off, I soften the suspension so the ride's not quite so hard. And then when the canopy's on, I firm it up a bit um, just to stop body roll. What else we got? We've got these two, got a toolbox on either side. In one of them, I keep a toolbox. In the other one, I keep a jerry can and just, they're basically just bits and bobs. They're not very watertight or anything, so can't keep anything too precious in them. So wheels and tires. Tires, I went with the BFG KO2s, just did a bit of research. Essentially, for me, they just felt like a safe bet. Um, haven't had any issues with them, absolutely loving them. The wheels are just black steel rims, nothing too fancy with them. The size wise, 265-75-16. So they're I think that's basically like 32s in, in 32 inches in, in kind of old terms. That's most of the outside, I think. There's a snorkel on the front. I didn't put that there. Seems like it's doing its job. It's all watertight, which is good. So I can drive up to pretty deep, which is nice. I guess the, the roof counts as the outside, doesn't it? So roof wise, got two awnings, uh, Wanderer, and the King's one at the rear. Got them both secondhand as like a package deal for 40 bucks, I think. Both of them are a little bit moldy and whatnot, but they keep the water off and they keep the sun off and they do their job very well. Got my mal on the roof. I've just taped some padding down to kind of protect the board and whatever else I want to put on the roof. On the other side, I keep the shovel just with a rope. I mean, you can buy shovel mounts, but they cost like 60 bucks or something. And I don't know, I don't get it down enough to warrant spending 60 bucks on that. To be honest, I just cut off a bit of rope and use that. Works fine. Cool. All right. Well, that's the outside. Let's have a look in the cockpit. Nothing, nothing particularly fancy going on here at all. Uh, we'll go, I guess we'll go down the center first. Just 
put in a radio. This was one of my mate's secondhand one. Like he'd just removed it from his car to upgrade. So he gave it to me for free. Thank you very much, Simo. You're a legend. And he helped me put it in. He's an electrical engineer. So that was nice. Just got an aux cord that comes, comes out here. And then I plug it into my phone. Listen to audio books, podcasts, and whatnot. Phone charger, UHF radio. It's just one of the old Uniden uh, sundowners. Again, came with the car. Works fine if I'm in kind of eyesight of, of whoever I'm talking to. But outside of that, it's pretty rubbish, to be honest. Um, I just have a handheld unit in that, in this little thing that I use if, if I need to talk longer distances. This little doodad, I've disconnected, but I haven't actually taken it off. I should probably do that. It used to tell me with the old electrical system, the how many volts were in the battery and it told me the outside temperature, um, but it was, the temperature gauge was in the engine bay, so in the engine box. So it absolutely was just way off all the time. So pretty damn useless, but you know, whatever. Came with the car. What can I tell you? Uh, so as far as the dash goes, a um, couple of minor issues. The, the fuel gauge doesn't work. It constantly, it always says I'm on zero liters. So whenever I fill up, I just reset the odometer. I know I can get about 650 Ks out of a tank. So I just fill up at around the 500 meter mark, a 500 kilometer mark. And that's worked fine so far. I'll probably get that fixed or get a, um, like a second fuel gauge kind of thing because it's it's not ideal but it's not really high on my priority list back here keep my hat drone shopping bags solar blanket we'll talk about that in the electrical part and yeah that's about it really this little compartment's great just toilet paper hand sani sunscreen lip balm all that all that rubbish a couple little items across the dash that just seem to kind of collect the dashes like my pool room, like from the castle. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. All right, now the, the fun part. I'd consider it the fun part, the canopy. So it's a Rolock Industries 2.4 meter by 1.8 meter uh, aluminium canopy. Bought it second hand, just like everything else, for $2,200 or something pretty cheap so the the canopy doesn't quite fit on the tray it's about it's about 10 mil too wide on either side which is a bit of a bummer but i've just used some i think they're two by four um and just got kind of a lattice work underneath I mean that i could put in this table which is just a, a ply table that i put a sheet of stainless on the top so that's my filleting kind of area which is great super easy to clean doesn't matter if it smells like fish because it's not in the in the actual car. Um, the canopy itself is held on by these little clips. All right, I think that's the outside of the canopy. Done. Um, the reason I went with the aluminium canopy is so that I could have all of my life in there and jack it off and leave it behind um, so that I could take the weight off and those kinds of things. And this thing's incredibly waterproof and dust proof and everything. I literally haven't had any ingress of, ingress, ingress? Ingress, I think, not ingress. Ingress of anything. The inside of the canopy, the interesting part. So I guess we'll just work from the front back. This is a bit of a mess at the moment, but there's normally one of those big circular tubs there where I keep all my dive gear and, and wet things. I'll show you where the water comes out on the other side. Up here, I keep my swag and two chairs and normally some firewood here, so it stays nice and dry. Uh, this is just my stuff from work, work. All right, so we got three of these nice big drawers where I just keep random bits of storage. So we've got air compressor, ropes, ropes, camp oven, recovery kit, tire stuff I think there's also there's jumper leads in that one as well and this one we've got little bits and bobs that I use often <laughs> Metho. Uh, first aid kit empty box there that's normally where I keep my beers but I keep on drinking them all 
lights, aqua tabs. What else have we got in here? We got tarps, bucket, hoochie, ground sheets in there as well. And the last one, this is my favorite drawer. This is the toys drawer. Um, here we've got, we've got a little newspaper drawer here. Got all my fishing gear, so salt water, fresh water lures, and salt water lures, I guess. Fly fishing kit, uh, drone stuff, camera stuff, spare sleeping bag, and then back there is just books and things like that. Anatomy books, just physio related stuff, really. As far as these drawers go, um, they're really simple. It's literally just plywood. I've got them running on these boat trailer slides instead of having like runners on either side. Cause I mean, runners I've seen, you just get sand, grit. It's just like things, things are gonna break and they weigh a fair bit. These things might weigh 500 grams each. You literally bolt them on and the ply slides pretty darn well on it really. Like you need to give it a little bit of sting to pull it out, but certainly nothing ridiculous. So this, this is actually what I would recommend. If anyone's thinking about putting a draw system in, don't bother with runners. It's just harder. These things work beautifully. They're actually, my, my older brother gave me the idea for them. He, he has a setup in his old patrol and he, he used them, um, don't know where or who he got the idea of. I don't, he might have come up with it himself, I doubt it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it works really well. Up top, we've got my spear gun on this side. Just rigged it up with some bungee and like PVC fittings, basically. Beach rod, light rod, and fly fishing gear. Um, they're, they're all just basically attached on the framing of the canopy um, so that it doesn't leak essentially. So I haven't put any holes in the actual outer shell of the canopy. Keep my maxis in here at the back. So this is the hub, this is the side. This is where the, uh, <laughs> this is where the magic happens, baby. So we've got big old toolbox. Uh, what is it? It's King Chrome toolbox, bought it second hand, 80 bucks, something like that. That's my closet. Just keep all my clothes in there. It's, I do have more clothes than that, <laughs> but they're back at the apartment in Bernie. Uh, this is where I keep my fire top grill. This is just the King's one, but it's bloody fantastic, I must say. Really, really good. Works nicely. You gotta have a decent fire under it because it sits quite high up, but I cook on that most nights um, when I'm camping, if I'm allowed to fire. Bottle opener here, extremely important feature. This is my favorite section by far. This is my kitchen. Fold this down. So we've got a nice big table with my lovely VB mat on it. This was given to me as a birthday present. Willis Thompson gave me this. Bloody good present. This is marine ply, so I can get it wet um, and it's no dramas at all. I'll run you through all the drawers in the kitchen. So six, six of these drawers, these are just from Bunnings. They come with an extra level, so they come with four of these shelves. So I just angle grinded the bottom ones off and kind of rigged this up. In this one, this is kind of my everything uh, drawer. Got the billy, speaker, my welding gloves, um, hand sanitizer, all that kind of stuff that you, you access every day around the, around the campfire. Here's the washing up, it's cleaning up section, kind of speaks for itself. We got my cooker, just the Coleman two, two burner from Bunnings. I think it costs like 40 bucks, something like that. This pan is really, really good. It's got a removable handle. Um, so it's super easy to attach and take off. So normally say this is the fire, I'll put this in there, take the handle off and then this whole thing can just be left in the fire basically. And it means that storage is super easy too. So that just lives on there with my spare Tupperware containers. Um, this is all of my kitchen gear. So knives, chopping board, cups, plates, bowls, yada, yada, yada. I'm basically set up for two. So I've got two of everything, which is handy for when I'm going camping with a friend um or anyone or multiple people it just means that i've got spare kit 
Um, so I can literally go camping with another person and all they have to bring is a swag or a tent and a mat, um, basically. So that's that. In here is kind of, I guess, spices, oils, coffee, tea, Vegemite, Milo, all that good stuff. And then this is kind of the more foody stuff. So we've got a cereal, noodles for if I ever need them, potatoes, bananas, yada, 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 all that stuff. My flowers down there. That's that. This is the outlet for the water. That's a 40 litre water tank in there. I think it used to be like a, an ethanol container. Um, so I just let it kind of dry up. And now I've just plumbed it in with this simple kind of system. Works nicely. Running water. It's just gravity fed, but works fine. And then fridge. Uh, this is just Waco. I think it's CFD. Ooh. Something like that. It's an old Waco. Um, the front latch is broken, so I had to screw this thing on. 40 litres, absolutely all I need. Any more would be a bit of a waste. I literally just chuck things in there, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, all of the woodwork on the inside of here, um, I did, and it's all bolted together and then bolted onto this. Um, so it, it, none of it can move inside the canopy. So it's all, it's all locked down basically, which is good. <laughs> At the moment, this is where I have to keep my um, awning pole because of that night when I let the awning fill up with water and it broke. Got my sticker collection going up here. Um, just got three stickers on there at the moment, Bay of Fires, Horny Cray, and just a trout fishing one. Um, the idea is to fill this whole thing up. I think that'd be sick. And then when I'm old and gray and can't go on trips anymore, I'll take this door off and hang it up in my shed. And then I can look at the door and just think, I used to have fun. All right, that's the inside of the canopy, I think. Now, the electrical system. Did all this with um, one of the uh, one of the guys I worked with at Lismore, um, which was a lot of fun, and, and he was he was very helpful, which was great. And so were his neighbours who came and helped out a bit as well. Actually, let's start with the battery. So the battery's in there, tucked in there. It's really nice and snug. I put it on some foam so it doesn't vibrate too much. It's a one. 100 amp hour lithium battery, just the Voltex brand, which is, it was pretty cheap. It was like 450 bucks. So I honestly don't know how long it'll last, but it's it's doing me excellently. Like I have absolutely no issues with um, the amount of power I get. In saying that, I don't use a lot of power. So, yep. So that's hooked up to the charger in the back there. The charger is an iTech World BC to DC 40 amp charger. Really easy unit to install yourself. Um, I mean, I have absolutely no um, auto electrical knowledge and it wasn't, it wasn't too bad to rig up. Comes with these handy Anderson plugs um, and Anderson plugs on the other side. Then that just runs through this junction box, which you put on the front, um, which I can disconnect when I want to jack the canopy off and then it just gets left behind. Put that over the top. Nice and easy. Then on this side, we've got 700 watt kick-ass inverter. Literally only use this for charging my laptop, charging drone batteries, maybe GoPro stuff. And then I've got this little eBay doodad, which has just got some switches switch on and off. I've only got two of them that are actually rigged up at the moment. This one puts power to an extra Siggy socket and USB and that one goes to one of the lights um, which fit down here. When I actually need to use it I put it up put it up top there. Really really simple setup as you can probably tell. This is where I keep my 200 watt solar blanket just a king's one. So if I stay somewhere for more than like two nights, I'll probably put that out, try and get some sun, try and get a bit more power into it. Seems to work fine. What I will say though, with the Kings one, the first 200 watt blanket, I had a look over it and there was, some of the cells were broken. 
so one whole kind of third of the solar panel wasn't going to work um, so if you do buy a king solar panel just just have like a decent look over the cells make sure none of them are broken whatnot because it, it just won't work if if they are so there you have it guys it's not much but it's honest work <laughs> at the end of the day my advice would be do do what you can with what you got see how far it gets you and i mean you can you can upgrade along the way like if you're thinking of doing a big trip don't wait until your car's got all the fruit on it go there are shops around australia you can always pick up stuff if you if you're waiting for your car to be perfect you're never going to go anywhere and one bit of advice my old man gave me was the closer you get to going the harder it's going to be to go they'll continue to be things that stack up stack up stack up so i guess oh, when i was looking when i was doing research into kind of setting all this up i wanted to know price wise um so i'll give you guys a bit of an idea but the prices have probably all changed recently with covid tax on four-wheel drives at the moment so the hilux itself cost me 14 and a half grand canopy was two two and a bit with all the legs and attachments and roof racks that i had put on it kind of it would have gone up to three grand tires and suspension were four grand all the plywood i already had and then all the other little bits and bobs in there i kind of either had at home or they cost 10 20 bucks each so what's that if we go let's say 15 grand for the car five grand for tires and suspension takes us to 20 chuck another three grand on for the canopy 23 and maybe a, a thousand bucks worth of extras so 24,000 bucks all up it's probably about right i would say um uh, electrical is probably another thousand so let's say 25,000 bucks What's up guys, Tom from the future here. Uh, sorry, I'm pretty rubbish at remembering to film these uh, outros, as we call it in the biz. Um, but thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, all that stuff. If you wanna see more of these kit videos, let me know. I, could sh I can show you through all my toys, which would be a pretty fun episode actually. Like all the fishing gear, surfing gear, and diving gear and whatnot. But yeah.